Ik doe het voor ijs. Ijs. Let's get money. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to episode 11 of Cash Flow. All right, my special guest today is Dewan Van, Van the Brand, all right? And he's going to be talking about the Detroit brand, community business, all right? And so, you know, I'm really excited because I met him during Detroit Startup Week, another, you know, tie into the Detroit, you know, how Detroit is bubbling and coming up, all right? And so if you're an entrepreneur in the city or it doesn't really matter, anywhere in the world, You know, how do you get your business cracking in your in your community or how do you get things going? You know, it's just like hip hop, man. You gotta you gotta get that 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 baseline in your community before you can start to expand. All right, and Vance gonna talk to with us about that. All right, so I'm gonna get into the cash tip. This week I want y'all to think about building or creating a budget for yourself, all right? So You know, I'm not a big stickler on saving as much as I am on cash flow, right? So for me, it's about creating the budget and then going out and finding the means to pay for everything that you got in your budget. And you need a budget, not just for your personal life, but also for your business. You know, Marshawn spoke about how you should treat your business like a stranger instead of like a baby. Same thing. You got to know exactly how much you're spending, where it's going. Okay, and how is that, you know, what's your return on investment, all right? So please, you know, you can use Excel. I'm sure there's a lot of tools out there free on the internet that you can use, all right? Or you can get with an accounting professional or maybe a financial advisor to help you put that together, all right? And then we're going to be coming back with Van. Baby Backs, located on Seven Mile in Livernoy. Specialized in high quality ribs, soul food, and assorted desserts. Come on now, you already know. so good you're sweating magic all right man we are back all right with dewan van the ceo of finish digital all right and he's going to be talking to us about his path um in entrepreneurship and how his company is generating cash flow uh, for himself but also how he helps businesses um in detroit so van kind of talk to us about your path to becoming an entrepreneur Gotcha. Um, so my path wasn't the traditional uh, entrepreneur route. If tra if we can even put yeah, traditional exactly. entrepreneur together, <laughs> um, but it's it's for me. It's all about like being mission driven. Okay. Um, and so when I when I started off, um, just my career in general, I did a lot of like volunteer work. Um, worked with a lot of nonprofits, um, and just wanted to kind of give back. And what I ended up learning was in order to make a big impact, you have to have like a power position. Um, so I found um, an organization who uh, was starting a small business association. And so I started there and I helped build that association, created it, funded it, um, and got businesses working together. And I actually did it in what at the time was deemed as the most dangerous neighborhood in Detroit, and that's the 48205 area, right? right. Um, and so to, to, to even think you're going to create a business association around that time was like you was out of your mind. Um, but we ended up doing it, and it was incredible to see a lot of like small business owners come together and understand like what their issues were and how they're going to fully you know, develop and grow. And I was able to kind of nurture all those relationships. Uh, so that was my start. Um, after that, I started working with uh, City Council, City of Detroit, um, doing some doing the same work at a grander scale. So I helped businesses develop and figured out like different resources they needed to to help you know make them better in the city of Detroit. So now I'm working for you know City Council um, with a, in a, in a large district and not just a generalized area. 
Um, after we started to uh, see what the trends were, we developed new programming and uh, different organizations that help those small businesses as well. Uh, so then after that, I got a little <laughs> selfish. Um, and so I was like, hey, you, like this, this work is amazing. It's impactful. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not helping my pockets right now. Um, so I wanted to achieve um, more like financial freedom, if you will. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I started going into uh, corporate America. In corporate America, um, uh, my finances were a lot higher than what they were when I was working in nonprofit. Um, and you're going to see that a lot of times anyway. Um, so I, I managed to get to six figures. Um, and everybody always wants to get like, man, I can't wait when I get six figures. You know, I want to be a six figure guy. Uh, so I was making six figures, um, and I could do anything I wanted financially, like right. any, anything I wanted, like whether it's a trip, whether it was a, a purchase, a luxury item, it didn't matter. Like I was financially free to do it. Um, but what happens is once you start doing stuff for money, you lose that passion. You don't feel fulfilled anymore. Uh, so I stopped feeling fulfilled, and I was literally there just for the money, and that's like a hard pill to swallow sometimes. And so I was like, man, I need to do something else because this right here isn't enough for me. So I need to take my talents and my skill sets somewhere else, and this right here doesn't fulfill me fully. Like the money is good, yeah. but it's just money at the end of the day. Like what's your purpose? How are you gonna make an impact? Like what type of legacy you're gonna leave when you leave this earth? Um, so I straight up quit my job um, in November with no plan at all. Everybody thought I was crazy, but I felt like I was crazy if I was staying here. You know what I mean? I'm staying here, giving them all my talents and my skills, and I should be taking this elsewhere. So I quit yeah. my job in November. No plan whatsoever. I don't suggest this for anybody <laughs> out there. Uh, do not do this. Um, but uh, it, it's something that, you know, I, I did. Um, and I lived with that. Um, and for the first month, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, so I just started kind of planning and strategizing. And then uh, this past January, I officially launched my company. Uh, which is Finish Digital, a digital marketing company that helps uh, small businesses um, and community organizations. Um, we specialize in uh, whether it's social media help, um, social media advertising, uh, building websites. Uh, we try to do it all for um, a lower budget than what a lot of these digital marketing companies yeah. are charging. So we try to be that one-stop shop boutique uh, for those small businesses. Um, and since we launched, we've had several clients and we're, we're studying building out um, more, more talent um, in our organization. Uh, we're, we're, right now, we have a couple projects that are underway. I can't really speak about them right now. Um, but um, probably within the next three months, um, there's going to be some huge announcements um, I'm really excited for. Okay, that's great, man. I mean, you, you, you talked about, so you had, you was making good money. Right. But you talk about this passion. Yes. You talk about, like, like what was that exactly? What was it, like, like I, I mean, you kind of talked about you, you quit, but, like, what was the, what was the, like, when, when you walked in the door at work and you was like, that's it. What was that moment? <laughs> I, I think it was, uh, I think it was just a constant buildup, man, um, because, it, it wasn't just that day. It was consistently like month in and month out. I'm feeling like, man, like this is going nowhere. It was it was almost dead end to me. I okay. was like, it's just the same thing. So it was just so much build up to one day I just popped and I'm like, I'm done. Like I physically cannot stay here. Like I have to leave. And at the time my supervisor thought like, hey, you're just going through something. I'm going to give you a day off. Then he gave me a week off. And then when I didn't return, he knew I was serious. Um, so it was something that just over time, man, it, it wasn't anything specific. I just felt like just thinking about it day in and day out, it just was killing me, like killing my spirit. It's killing who I am as a person. And then I finally got fed up and just like exploded, you know, <laughs> in a way. And I said, hey, this is my last day. I'm gone. And, and you know, this is it. All right. We're going to be back with more from Dewan. Welcome to Thinkers Co-working Spaces located on Jefferson and Chalmers. Hey, give us a call at 313-728-5662 or 313-850-3703. We have all the space that you need. Weddings, baby showers, you meetings, you name it, we got it. We aim to please or look us up at thinkerscoworkingspaces.com or at thinkthinkers.com. Thinkers, baby. We're back. 
with Dewan Van, and he was talking to us about his journey in the entrepreneurship. Um, now I want to kind of get an idea of your feelings on Detroit as a hub for 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 entrepreneurs, um, and why why is it you know why is everything so exciting in the city of Detroit? Why is it you know it's just a good time to be an entrepreneur now in the city? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think even outside of Detroit, like right now, entrepreneurship is the thing. Um, I remember being younger, um, like 15, looking into like owning a business and it wasn't like it is now. Like it's so many different resources. Everybody wants to do it. It's like trendy and it's fun. So just outside of Detroit, um, entrepreneurship is, is, is one of those things where everybody wants to do it and it's this wave. Um, Detroit in particular has a lot of uh, good things that are going on, um, especially with like technology now. There's a lot of new tech companies that are coming downtown. Um, we just recently did Detroit Startup Week, uh, which was a seven day uh, kind of celebration for entrepreneurship. Um, and even if you weren't an entrepreneur, um, Detroit Startup Week was just an event for the entrepreneur minded. Yeah. Because you were able to get some type of like resource, some type of connection, something that uh, could help you uh, with your life journey. Um, and, I, and I really believe that. So hopefully a lot of people um, love that, that seven week uh, event. And I'm sorry, seven day event. Uh, <laughs> and uh, hopefully it's bigger and better um, next time. One of the things uh, that I seen during Detroit Starter Week 2 was it was so much synergy um, in the downtown area, midtown, where we were doing events, having panel discussions. It was like super exciting, right? Super fun. Uh, I was part of the team who organized uh, the events for the neighborhoods. So in the neighborhoods talking about uh, Osborne, talking about Grandma Rosedale, Southwest Detroit. Um, and this, the, that same synergy wasn't there. Um, and so what I think is happening is we're forgetting about the neighborhoods and we're focusing on downtown and midtown maybe a little too much. And I mean, it's an age old tale. It's always been like the, the um, two, two tales in, in one city, right? So it's like downtown Detroit, the neighborhoods. You know what I mean? It's, it's two, different, um, two different situations. So I want to say, especially for next year, like we have to start promoting neighborhood businesses a lot more. We got to do a better job at that. Um, there's so many unique stories about entrepreneurs who um, may not have the luxury of being downtown you know, can't pay that high rent, you know, um, aren't able to have, you know, that business or doesn't have that, that, that network. Um, so we have to really focus on bigging up and promoting those neighborhood businesses, you know, those mom and pop shops, um, making sure we're, we're shopping there more, we're investing, um, and not just kind of segmenting, uh, downtown, um, versus everywhere else in Detroit, because there's no way the entire city can come back without us including the neighborhoods you know we're, we're, right. we're the comeback city and everybody is like excited and oh there's so many great things which it is you know I'm, I'm a person that you can find me downtown a lot but you also can find me in the neighborhoods talking to different business owners partnering with organizations figuring out a way to really you know make this whole city work um so you know that, that's my two cents but uh we'll, we'll, we'll be doing detroit starter week uh next year um, and I want more involvement with a lot more neighborhood businesses this awesome. time. Yeah, I mean, I, I also I got to uh, be a part of that. And I mean, it was very educational. Um, but one thing that I always have an issue with is is focusing too much on technology. Right, right. And right. not and not on, you know, just plain old. I buy something for less yes. and sell it for more. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, the basics of business. Right. And 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 I think we're saying the same thing where people yeah. fall in love with downtown, people fall in love with coding. Exactly. But like the the grit and the grime of business yeah. Yeah. is yeah. in the neighborhoods. Right. Like, you know, one thing that I always talk about is Man, it's millionaire. It's millions of dollars on Seven Mile. It's millions of dollars on Six Mile. It's mm -hmm. it's opportunities mm -hmm. outside of you know the the more uh, you know the more fluent neighborhoods in the city. Mm -hmm. You know you don't have to just be in Midtown and in, in downtown to make mm -hmm. money. You can make money um, all over the city mm -hmm. 
but it's understanding the market, understanding what people really what pe people really want and what they really need. Right. And so I think that that's huge. That you know, yeah, that would be huge for a, pro a, a program like the Choice Startup Week or any program that deals with small businesses in the yeah. city to focus on the neighborhoods because yeah. those people need the same type of you know um, education, the same type of assistance mm -hmm. grants mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. and they and I'm sure they could not only get the same return but a better return even 100% uh, yeah and, and I think you you're kind of touching on it too um one area that is like thriving right now is going to be even better as time progresses is um the 7 Mile Livernois the university district I mean Cuzzo's that restaurant is 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 a true testament of that of of neighborhood business that can yes, be definitely. successful it's always packed. Like every time I go in there, I gotta wait at least thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> food is food is amazing. So you have those different businesses like in the neighborhoods that you know um, are here and there. But to have the entire neighborhood doing well and the entire Detroit doing well is the real mission. Yes, definitely. All right, we'll be back with more from Van. Wazoo Mobile Technologies connecting businesses and customers at a fraction of the price. Wherever you may go. Quickly and easily find and compare deals and businesses with Wazoo. Now with over 20,000 downloads. Set preferences and see the best deals. Or see all the new hair and fashion styles on Style Swiper. Browse for new hair and fashion styles. Get directions to nearby salons who offer unique styles. Wazoo and Style Swiper from Wazoo Mobile Technologies. Available on the App Store and Google Play. All right, Dewan, so um, what are three tips you would give other business owners, um, you know, in, in, in regards to, you know, their journey and having success? Um, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm super passion driven. Um, so I, I, will, I would say to aspiring entrepreneurs or even people who just started their company along with me because I'm still in the startup phase myself, um, do things that you're passionate about. Okay. Because at the end of the day... Uh, the money, the, the success, the accolades are all at the end of that tunnel. But if you aren't doing things that you're passionate about, then whatever business you start, uh, whatever endeavor you do will fall by the wayside. So make sure you're passionate about whatever you decide to invest your time in. And if you are, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have fun. You're going to be successful. And you're going to look at that like, man, this is like amazing. And it's going to, like I said earlier, part just being part of your legacy. Like, what do you leave behind? Uh, so passion is one. Uh, another thing is discipline. Um, yeah, definitely. Discipline. And, and discipline is hard, man. <laughs> yeah. Discipline uh, is, is, is certainly a skill. You got, you got to invest um, um, into that skill of discipline. And discipline for me is, you know, me waking up at 4 a.m. every single day. It does not matter. I need to wake up at four. I need to look at my to-do list. I need to return emails. I need to make sure clients are okay. I need to figure out how I can generate more business. You know, it's taking yeah. care of your body. You're hitting the gym at a certain time and being out. You know what I mean? And you making sure you dedicate enough time to your business each and every day. You should, by minimum, invest at least 10 hours into your business per day. You don't have to do the crazy like 18 hours and stuff like that. I think that's that, that's kind of uncalled for. Um, but if you're super passionate and, you, and you're pushing yourself, then fine by all means. But you have to invest in at least 10 hours like really, really hustling and working hard. Yeah. And that requires discipline. And sometimes discipline is small. Being on time for a meeting. Like, yes. I don't know how many times where there was a potential client or a partner or something and you're late. And it's like you didn't even give me a heads up about you being late. Like it's, it's super unprofessional. So you got to have that discipline where you can be on time for stuff, where you can you know invest your time, where you can work on your business. Um, so passion, uh, discipline, and then the other thing would, for me would be just having patience because you're not going to win overnight. No one who's successful, it didn't happen overnight. Right. So it's going to take time. So sometimes you got to invest a year, two years, three years, four or five years and then once you do, then you get that return. Then things are fruitful. Yeah. But if you don't have that patience, then you'll never make it. So really buckling down and saying, hey, I have a vision. I'm passionate about it. I'm going to do it. Just know that it's going to take time. 
And if you can do that, you're going to be okay. And then in three, five years, when you're rich on your yacht, (laughs) your business is doing well, um, you're like, man, you know, I I made it. And whatever that looks like for different people, success is different for everybody, right? Um, But I I will tell you, to get to success, it's going to take that time. You're going to put, you know, you got to put the work in and, you know, just have patience. No, that's not everything you said is excellent and, and true. Um, but going back to you know taking your time, what is your what are your goals for the next twelve months, mm-hmm. five years, and even even twenty years from now? Gotcha. Um, so twelve months. Uh, number one, I want to always hit uh, my number in terms of like income and yes. money I generate for the business. So I'm going to make sure I, I hit those sales goals. Uh, the other thing would be I want to find good talent to onboard to my company. Um, so I want to have yeah. some of the best like creators, some of the best people to analyze data, um, some of the best people who understand where social media and the internet is going. Because there's so many complexities with all these different tools that we have, like from you know the software we're using, the apps to you know the websites we're on it's so many different things to consider and what can really make a brand pop what can make a business work how can you sell a product um what kind of e-commerce site can i set up so having those people that are really really good and understanding that is super important because if you can build that team and have that talent then your business can go to the next level so i'm really really focused on in the next 12 months is finding good individuals i can partner with I can work with and I can help um, build other companies with. Um, so being able to have a solid team um, is it, super important and they have to be just very talented at what they do. I want to nurture that talent. I want to be able to have a company where um, we're, we're, we're super creative. You know what I mean? Like I, I even think about like how I want to set up like note systems like for, for people I work with. Yeah. Like I want to I just brainstorm and we do mind mapping. You know what I mean? You know, so we're really creative at, at everything that we do. So finding the right people to work with is going to be super important and probably critical uh, for my success for the next 12 months. Okay. Um, in terms of five years, in five years, I hope that my company is doing really well. Um, I have a good amount of, of talent on my team. Uh, I want to get to the point where after this is doing good, I can start venturing off and uh, working on another business. Yeah. Because eventually I want to become a serial entrepreneur. Yes. Where I'm, I have more than just this one business. So having several other businesses, uh, making sure this business is doing well. Because you don't want to just jump ship. A lot of people do jump ship on this business and start something else. Right. Like really you need to be making, you know, 100000 100, 100, plus from one business in order to even think about, you know, starting a second one. Um, so having multiple businesses. Uh, it's going to be super important uh, for the next five years for me. Um, and even in the next 20 years, I want to be in a position where the valuation of my company is extremely high. So I have an exit strategy just yeah. in case I need to sell the business. Yeah, exactly. So you want to make sure your business is valued at you know multiple millions of dollars, especially if you have investors and you have an exit strategy. You can leave this business and go elsewhere. Um, so making sure this business is doing really, really well in 20 years so that I can sell it or, you know, give it something to my kids as well. Just depending on, you know, what we're looking at, what, what marketing looks like <laughs> in exactly. 20 years, right? Um, so so that, that that's what I'm hoping for, you know, fingers crossed. Um, it's such a journey. Who knows what any of this stuff is going to look like in 20 years. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. Awesome, man. All right, man. So I want to thank uh, DeJuan for coming through today. Um, We got a few more segments to go through. I hope he sticks around, and we'll be back. The idea of starting a new business is exciting, but one will have to go through lots of obstacles before it turns into reality. Financial decisions made on the early stages of forming the business will dictate whether the venture will succeed or fail. But with Pettis, we'll help your business maximize in profits while minimizing your tax burden. We'll help you weigh the pros and cons of each financial decision you will take. We'll also form your business and set you up with free accounting software to help you keep track of your income and expenses. Don't risk making a mistake. Contact Pettis LLC, your full-service accounting firm in Detroit, for practical advice that will help you make the best decisions for your new business. All right, guys. So we're coming up on the Secure the Bag segment. 
All right, and I want to talk to you guys about customer acquisition. Okay, how are you going about bringing in new customers to your business and making sure that you are following up, following through, closing deals? All right, and then you know, kind of going through the referral process as well. Um, you know, I think that it's it, it it it's very important to probably incentivize your referrals. Um, so basically saying, you know, you know, if, if you bring in me X amount of customers, I can give you a session for free or, you know, maybe just do like a customer appreciation day for people that, you know, have stuck with you over the years. It's just, it's really important to show, you know, to have good customer service, um, and show that appreciation. Um, you know, you know, talking with, with, with DeWan also, I think a good thing is focus, uh, content. So on your social media, on your website, having, you know, on your vlog or blog, having information that is educational, um, you know, but that is also specific to your customer base so that they can, you know, they can realize that you are the expert in your business. And so when they hear something in regards to what you're doing, no matter what it is, they know that, oh, yeah, such and such. Yeah, he definitely is the expert in that field. And you want to get to the point where your reputation actually is preceding you, as long as it's a good reputation. But you want to make it so that the reputation is preceding you. Because I've had in my own experience, people be like, oh, yeah, you the accountant. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. But <laughs> you know that I'm an accountant. I'd rather you be saying that to me, though, than saying, oh, you the guy that, you know, is, is horrible with, with taxes. So it's, it's just, it's just, it's about building your brand, right? And... Getting to the point where, you know, people, when people see you or finally meet you, they already know that you are about your business, you take care of your customers, you know, and that, you know, you have, you just, you just have a, a reputation that, you know, that is, that is solid, all right? And so, a solid reputation will help you secure that bag, so, you know what I'm saying, that's real big. Um, okay, now, we're going to go straight into our celebrity or sellout. All right, talking about the Detroit brand, I thought that it'd be good to kind of talk about one of the biggest artists, whether it's music, entertainment, um, business, uh, is, is Eminem, Marshall Mathers, uh, you know, grew up, you know, in, in the suburbs of Detroit, but not too far from the city, um, you know, and I don't know about you, you, you know, but I can remember the first time I heard how my name is, you know, on MTV or, or on the radio. Uh, his impact in the music business has kind of um, shifted everything, in my opinion. Um, you know, as far as the, the the reach globally that artists have, you know, being able to go to Europe and generate money, um, and but also Middle America, um, you know, and so you know, Dr. Dre, they would say, is a genius for for putting this guy on. Um, and that's another thing, you know, we kind of touched on that grind before you shine. I think Eminem definitely had that where he kind of was underground for such a long time. And it just took that right opportunity. And once that opportunity came, he took full advantage of it. And now the man has sold over 220 million albums uh, across the globe, records across the globe, um, has his own record label, um, you know, course acting won an Oscar and also you know has done some endorsement and, and joint ventures with uh, some brands out of Detroit like Chrysler um, so I mean I think that you know the, the the lesson to take from this individual who is extremely talented is that it don't just happen overnight um, what's, your, what's, what's your feelings on you know him and his his journey as a businessman um so so with Eminem, um, I don't know how many like uh, ventures he do outside of music. Yeah. He's usually kind of quiet, and I think the reason for that is is because he's so big as far as music goes. Like he has a solid fan base. Like he can literally drop an album, right? And do a do a tour, and he's good. And for for other artists, you know, you're talking about like your Fifty Cents, um, talking about like your Dr. Dre's, and, and those type of artists. They they are. Their music is big, but their ventures are large as well. And I think Eminem, 
um, can be kind of lax on the business end because he's such a big artist. Right. And that's not for everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. These other artists don't sell as much as he sells and have that guaranteed check at the end of you know their tour that's going to be that large. So people like Eminem, he might have a venture here and there and he's usually quiet, but that's because he has the ability to have that strong fan base and sell the amount of records that he does. Um, I don't know how much Eminem does for Detroit. Um, I, I see things here and there, but in my opinion, he was the biggest hip hop artist, and at the time, at, the, at his height, was the biggest hip hop artist ever, um, especially with the records that he was breaking. Uh, but I've never seen him do too much for Detroit. I see more artists like a Big Sean. Uh, you know, Dej Loaf or T Grizzly, artists like that doing a lot more than what Eminem is doing for the city. And I, you know, I, I have no idea why. I just know when you have a platform and you have a lot of people ears and eyes that you should use it to the best of your ability. But in terms of like his ventures, I don't see a lot. Um, and that's just because he's Eminem, huge artist. He could, you know, drop something tomorrow and it probably won't be as good. It could be lukewarm, but it's going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I think and I think that is a I think that's a credit to um I think that's a credit to the way that he came into the game mm -hmm. um you know and also kind of he 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 didn't sound like anybody else right. before him right and so he he brought a, a whole nother audience mm -hmm. to hip hop um and there's a lot of brand loyalty when it comes to Eminem, yeah. um, it's a lot of people sure. who are, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter what he does, they're going to want to be a part of it, and they're going to want to, you know, when he does shows, but um, I do agree that he kind of is more focused on being an artist mm -hmm. than anything else, mm -hmm. and that's something to, to really consider when you're talking about business, because there's a lot of artists mm -hmm that are better business people than they are rappers, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. So, M is like the opposite, where right, right. he's such a good rapper, I, I would put, I would also say, for sure, Lil Wayne, we know he's not that good at business. Right. <laughs> so he's definitely a better rapper than business, right, man. Right, right. right? There's certain artists where they are better, they're better at I agree. <laughs> art artistry than they are yeah. at business. Right. And it, can, and it can also happen in your field. Like, you may be really good at Designing websites, mm -hmm. but you're not that good at getting people to buy websites from you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's where I think partnership is huge, mm -hmm. and I think Eminem has aligned himself right. with some of the best yeah. business people <laughs> yeah. in the game. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rosenberg, yeah. um, you know, Dr. Dre, Jimmy yeah. Iovine. That's where mm -hmm. you got to give up a little bit. Mm -hmm. To, 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 to survive in the game because, yes, as an artist, he's killing it. But as a businessman, he's needed assistance. Right. That's okay. Right. Just like in business. Right. You got to build a team. You do. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You do. All right. So before we go, you know, I want to, again, I want to thank DeWan for coming through. Let the people know how they can get in contact with you. Absolutely. Um, you can go on my social media. It's Van the Brand. Uh, really that simple. V as in Victor, A N N, then the brand uh, on all social media right now. I don't think it's a platform that I'm not on. Uh, I'm going to. I'm rebranding right now my uh, personal website, vanderbrand.com, as well as my business website. And that'll be coming in a couple weeks. But my personal website is vanderbrand.com. That'll be coming. And also Finish Digital, uh, which is my company, uh, finishdigital.com is the website. Um, you can check out more information, get in contact with me, send me any direct message, any questions you have. You know, I'm always here to help. That's that's my main thing. I always give first. Great, man. All right. So, you know, take away from today, you know, the your path to entrepreneurship is not going to always be easy. You know, even the path to it is not as easy. And when you get in the game... You know, it's not it's not always easy, but I but I, I agree with the one where you keep grinding and believe me over before long, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see the benefits of the work that you've been doing. And you got to enjoy the journey at the same time. When he talks about the passion, sure. it ain't just about the end result. Sometimes it's about the adventure, the journey to getting there. All right. Sure. So check us out. 
Um, and I'll be back next week. All right? Go get that cash for him. It's an ace! Ace! Let's get money! Cash flow! Uh.